So our role is protection of the public. So we will focus on a future risk to patients or to public confidence in the profession of doctors as a whole. If on the other hand, you want to understand what's happened about your care, you want an apology, often the best place to get that is the healthcare provider that provided the care. We do understand that this is quite complex, the system can be quite difficult to navigate, it can be hard to know where to go. So our website provides a lot of help and support around what types of things that we would deal with and what types of things other groups will deal with and, and where to go. I know. As you know, the Regional Liaison Service, of which I'm a member, we do a lot of work working with doctors, talking to doctors of all grades and uh, at all stages in their career. And so we get a lot of questions about our fitness to practice processes. One of the questions that doctors ask us is there's a perception that the threshold for GMC investigations is quite low. The perception is the GMC will investigate all complaints. Is that true? The threshold is set in the legislation, so, so we have to investigate those things that, that meet the, the legal test. But that's related to our role. So our role is to protect the public and so we don't investigate everything that we get mm -hmm. and in fact um, only, only a relatively small percentage would go through to an investigation. So the threshold is a serious or persistent failure to follow our guidance that poses a risk to the public or yeah. public confidence in the medical profession. So there are a significant number of public complaints that we get which are really important to us because we need to be able to see if there's a risk in there that we, we identify there isn't a risk and therefore we don't we don't take forward. Some of our investigations can take uh, several years to complete. Why can it take so long for an investigation to be resolved? So as well as the law setting out what types of cases we need to investigate it also sets out the steps that we have to carry out if we're investigating. Um, so once we've decided to open a formal investigation, we have to go through the steps set out in the legislation. Even if all that goes very smoothly, um, that takes a minimum of about six months. In individual cases, there can be additional delays. We do need quite a lot of information from other organisations um, and we do need to write to patients and others asking for information and sometimes we don't get that back straight away. Um, sometimes we receive new concerns when we're part way through the case and of course that means we have to go back and look at those. So, so those types of things can, can cause further delays. We're very conscious of the um, effects that delay can have um, on the person undergoing investigation but also the patients involved so we've, uh, we're doing lots of work to make sure that we only open an investigation when we need to.